Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Right, one more time for the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Because you are worthy. 
You are worthy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a selection. Following the selection, we will have some announcements. And then we will have another selection. And as I shared with you on last week, our tithing offer will be given on the way out the door. We pray that you will be obedient to this little tweet that we've done in our service. It's for a purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen.
in that land. No more sickness in that land. No more trouble in that land. Where we're going. What a day, what a day. Hallelujah. Just some announcements for St. John's family this morning. Uh, we thank God for the chairman of the Deacon Board, Deacon Herman Weaver, for standing in for your pastor on this Wednesday night teaching, uh, Wednesday night Bible study. We thank him for being so obedient on such a short notice. We also thank Minister Smith for that wonderful word that she preached on last Sunday. Thank you so much. All that was going on, I needed a break. We thank God for those who are willing to stand and hold my hands up and stand in my stead. Uh, let us continue to pray for the flowers, and we do realize that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot kill. But nevertheless, it's a process that uh, they must go through for our dearly beloved church club can flowers. To have 41 years with someone and all of a sudden. They're no longer there. Yeah. She needs our prayers. Yeah, a card to do sometimes. Yeah. And if the Lord places in your heart, maybe even fruit yeah. bags. But we need to show our love. You know, Sister Karen Flowers has toiled oh. many years. Oh, yeah. Tiresome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In this video. Oh, yeah. So let's continue to show her our love and support yeah. as we pray for her and the entire Flowers family. Just heard this morning that Brother Leroy Davis has transitioned on. Let us continue to pray for Brother Leroy Davis and his family as well. Leroy Davis grew up on Maple Street. Uh, years ago, and we were close, and your Brother Fred and I are the same age. But, uh, we know that the absence from the body makes him present with the Lord because Leroy was saved. And God seemed fit to take him home. I believe I heard on last Wednesday. So let us continue to pray for that time. And let us continue to pray for all those among us as a family that are sick and shut in. There are many among us that are going through some physical ailments in their bodies right now that we need to continue to lift up in prayer. And let me remind you on every Thursday at 6 p.m., Minister Ida Smith and Minister Joy Brown still is having the prayer room. I will put something out on Facebook this week with the conference call number that you can join me. My brothers and sisters and family here, it's the time right now, it's time for the church to pray. Amen. Like we've never prayed before. And I'm not talking and saying and putting it down that you don't pray. But there's something about corporate prayer. Amen. The Bible says when two or three gather in my name, touch and agree, that he will be in the midst. There's something about when the saints of God bombard in heaven that God hears our cry. Because the effective perfect prayer of a righteous person avails as much. And how do we show our righteousness? We be obedient to what God has asked us to do. Mm -hmm. So we're asking that you will join in on every Thursday at 6 p.m. And I will put something out on Facebook that you will have the access code and the phone number. Just a heads out. Yeah. Let you know. Can you turn your plate on, Sister Morgan, at 6 6 o'clock? <laughs> and get on a prayer letter and pray specifically for the St. John's family. And in the upcoming weeks, we will be calling it fast that we can pray, that we can target some things that we are going through as a family. Amen? Amen. Also, I'm asking that you keep my family, my sister Joanne. And Dwayne Bradley in prayer uh, concerning their son, our ne my nephew and their son. Uh, he has been going through surgery all week long. Uh, ever since Monday, his last surgery was on yesterday. Uh, we ask that you continue to pray for him and pray for our family as we support one another during these trying times. It never stops. But what I love about Jesus, he is our refuge, he is our strength, and he is our present help in the time of trouble. So I'm learning how to lean and depend on him. 
Because without Jesus in our lives, yeah. where would we be? Yes, so I'm glad today that my life is hid with Christ in God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, we will yeah, yeah. not withhold any good thing from us yes. as long as we do right. Yeah. And St. John, I want to congratulate you to continue to say to you uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all your support that you have shown during this unrest of time of the pandemic, even though we're not together physically all the time. Okay. And our worship experiences have been interrupted because of this pandemic. But behind the scenes, you have done a tremendous job on keeping St. John's Missionary Baptist Church afloat. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your offering. Thank you for the money that you are continuously paid to get this debt down. We thank you so much. Amen. There's nothing more that I can say but say thank you. Thank you. Continue Amen. to do the work that we need to do. And God will and has early blessings. So we thank you. We thank God for all the work that the trustees are doing behind the scenes. We won't get into that now, but when we come back together, we have some great news to share with the congregation about some of the things that the trustees have been doing during this pandemic. We thank God also for the deacons. We have been meeting, we have been talking through a conference call. And my family, I just want to say to you, I've been praising, praying and fasting all week long. As I begin to look at how this pandemic, this virus, is spreading all across our country. And I've been watching the numbers here in Berks County. And the Lord has placed it on my heart to meet with the deacons on yesterday. And we together have made a collective decision for the St. John's family. After the fifth Sunday of this month, we're going to start right back into total virtue on first Sunday. We want to do that before the government tells us to do that. And as your pastor, that was not an easy decision for me to make because I know the hearts of some of our people. And I also know the hearts of some of the people that are terrified. This is not for me to be selfish. This is not for me to look out in the congregation to see that there's people here. My responsibility as a shepherd is to protect you in any way that I can. And I'm not doubting God. I still walk by faith and not by sight. But I do believe in being proactive instead of being reactive. And I think it's a great need for us to do this. Because the Lord wants us to trust him. And I'm not minimizing what God can do. But he has also given us common sense. And as we see what's going on in our country, and how the country is so divided, how we see those politicians in Washington, D.C., not caring about the people that they was elected to govern. I don't want to be in that category. Because I have a higher calling than any elected official in government. And that is to look out for God's people. I know I can't please everybody. But this is about pleasing God. I don't want to put you in jail. So we don't know how long. But I believe that God is in control. Amen. When he told the children of Israel to go into your house and shut the door yeah. and pray mm -hmm. and put blood on your door, right, right. that was just for a time. Mm -hmm. Because the death angel was coming. Oh, so we got the blood of Jesus on us. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And the decision that has been made is not for my satisfaction. It's for the benefit of God's people. Now with that being said, those of you know who you are, from the beginning of this pandemic, you know what your responsibility is, you know what your post is. We're going to need you in the sanctuary. 
So we thank God uh, for you all. We really do. But I don't ever want to go back through. We don't want to ever go back through a place where God has put us and we're not obedient to Him. I'm not doing this because anybody else is doing this. I'm doing this because I love you. And please, wherever you're at, wear your mask. Wherever you're going, wear your mask. When I look at the things that are going on in Texas and Utah, and I'm hearing the nurses and the doctors who are wore out, we're not too far from it. Because just so yesterday, down in Washington, D.C., thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the street from all over the country, probably some from Burke County and from Reading, Pennsylvania, that is unprotected, that may come back and affect us. So we're going to get ahead of this. This Sunday will be our last in-house worship experience. To further notice. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile down upon you. And I love you with the love of Christ. Amen. We're going to have a selection and follow the selection. We will get right into the word. Pray with me and pray for me. Amen. Amen.
to the seventh and final church that Jesus addressed in the book of Revelation. The church in Laodicea. This church had been influenced by the culture in which it lived. The people were wealthy, which created an attitude of self-sufficiency. However, Jesus viewed the church from a different perspective. Yeah. They may have been wealthy, but spiritually the church was bankrupt. So Jesus begins to urge the church to rely on him rather than the wealth that they possess. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the Lord begins to expect his churches. He gave his commendations and or condemnation according to what he has discovered. This church, the church of Laodicea, I believe represents the church of the 21st century. Laodicea means people rule. Instead of the Holy Spirit leading and empowering the church, the people were trusting in themselves and their love. Laodicea was located about 40 miles southeast of Philadelphia and about 100 miles east of Ephesus. It became the leading commercial city in La Crosse Valley because of the location that it was at, the way it positioned on a main road that ran from Ephesus in the west of Cyrene. Antioch was in the east, and Hierapolis, with its hot springs, was about eight miles to the north. Let me just give you some background. Laodicea had no reliable water source of its own. It also served as a leading banking center. The city was well known for manufacturing of garments made of soft black wool and was the home of a famous medical school specializing in eye treatment. This city was destroyed by a massive earthquake in 60 AD. Now instead of leaning on Rome for money to rebuild as Sardis did, Laodicea paid for the rebuilding themselves. Now, 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 the focus of this particular letter is to rebuke the church of Laodicea for its self-reliance and lack of dependence on God. Jesus wanted them to return back to fellowship with him, that they may receive the provision that only he could provide. In Laodicea, my brothers and sisters, I believe that we see alarming similarity to the church of today. Are you praying with me? Yes. Come with me as we look at the realities within the text. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to reason with you on this morning. As we preach from this thought, what God inspects pre-existing conditions. What God expects is pre-existing conditions. Number one, here we have Jesus. We're speaking to the church at Laodicea. And the first thing he does, he inspects the precondition of that church. Oh, you're praying with me. He says in verse 14, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. He inspects the church. He came with no words of condemnation or no commending them for what they have done. As a matter of fact, he saw nothing pleasing within that church. Jesus certainly has the right to inspect his church. I believe you would agree with me on that. He has the right to step into the church and begin to walk around to inspect what he has created. My brothers and sisters, there are many things that are manufactured in our country and abroad that before it goes out the door, they have inspectors to inspect the quality of what they're about to put out before it hits the main line. Are you praying with me? 
So Jesus here is inspecting the church at Laodicea, and I do believe that he has walked into the church early in 2020, and he begins to inspect the quality of the faith that the people had, and he calls us to pause from the things that we like to do to take a look at what we're not doing. Are you praying with me? Oh, yes. What God inspects is the pre-existing condition. And I believe that he has looked at the condition of the church, and he says, hold up, wait a minute. I have paid a great price for what these people are doing now. Lord have mercy. It's an abomination to me. Oh, I know you don't want to hear this this morning, but the devil is alive. But we have to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That our living might not be in vain. My brothers and sisters, we're living in a time now where the church has to rise up yes, and yes, see the calling that's on their life. On yesterday, my wife and I just briefly were looking at a movie. A movie called One Church. It's on Amazon Prime. And in this movie in the beginning, it had a scene of a politician in his house with his wife looking out the window and here comes a lady that looked like she was demonically possessed, singing hymns in front of the house. And as he begins to look again, he noticed that this young girl that was singing hymns in front of his house was wearing his daughter's clothes. Now mind you, earlier that day, his daughter had a desire to go to church. And then they showed another scene that his daughter was in this church. Everybody dressed in white. Their hands were held up. And they were worshiping God. And the pastor comes in because the elder was performing worship with these people. And when the pastor came in, he began to serve them communion. Thousands of people. And then they showed another scene that they all was dead. They drank the Kool-Aid. And this, this politician was so angry with God. And he walked out of his house with his ring and he begins to say, I'm going to get you back, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you have done to my daughter. You took her under the name of the church. I'm paraphrasing it. But this politician would serve in the Senate, elevating himself to the president. And there was a pastor that started a mega church that he loved so well that served in the White House. And he was older now, and he passed the baton to his son. And they wanted to recognize him, and they gave him a award for his service that he rendered for the White House as a pastor. But he had another son that did not approve on how the other son was running the church. Everything that his dad did, he tore it down. This young man went on to do some mission work for about three years, but when he came back, his brother, which was a senator, became the president. Now he has got all the Senate together and declared that there's only going to be one church. This is fiction now. But it's merely what we're experiencing today. That what we got, we got legislators trying to tell us what we can and cannot do. Lord, are you praying with but at the end, God prevailed because the Bible says, no weapons be formed against us shall prosper. Right. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand together, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Are you believing me today? What God inspects is preconditioned existence. How we carry on the ministry of the gospel. Or oh, are you praying with good morning? God has a right to send his son Jesus to die on the cross and he still has a right to judge the church today. Verse 14 says, These are the words not of Reverend Jones, not of any call out man or woman of God, but these are the words of the Amen, the final authority. He is the faithful and true witness revealing the truth about what he sees. And he has the right to inspect the church, to look at their pre-existing condition. 
Now, pre-existing conditions can come upon us in any way. Right now, the ACA is under scrutiny and even in the Supreme Court trying to tear it down. But there is a pre-existing condition that all of us was born with. We were born in sin and shape and iniquity. And Satan does before God, because the Bible says he's always before God accusing the brethren. That is his job. But we all have a pre-existing condition that Jesus Christ died for. Because he is the ruler of all God's creation because God created us in his image and for his glory. And I do believe that we have gotten out of place. And God begins to inspect us. And we need to take inventory of what we stay with God. Are you praying with him? For he is the ruler of creation. As a matter of fact, Jesus was in the beginning. John 1 and 2 says, In the beginning was God. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning, talking about Jesus, because he is the origin. He is the founder of the church. Listen, listen. As Jesus inspects the church, he says this in verse 15. I know your deeds. King James says, I know your works. But he says that you are neither hot, no cold. Mm -hmm. And I wish you were either one or the other. Mm -hmm. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you or screw you out of my mouth. Lukewarmness is defined as lacking conviction. Mm -hmm. Or living head heartedly for God. Let me say it again. Lukewarmness is defined as lacking conviction or living half heartedly for God. In other words, the scripture always backs up the script of the scripture. Having a form of God. But denying the power there are. People today don't care about nothing but themselves. What they can gain and how they can use you to gain more. If that wasn't the case, why are we seeing what we're seeing now? Where people are in trouble and they're looking to the government to get them out of trouble. But what God wants to deal with for our pre-existing condition is that when the people of God his people, who are called by his name, yeah. if they could just humble themselves and pray and seek his truth, he will hear our God and he will heal our land. You don't have to say that, but I believe that. But we're living in a time where the church has gotten lukewarm, no conviction, no word for God. Living one way on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and come to church on Sunday, trying to render a service with God, and God is not pleased with that. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it, Pastor. He's not pleased with that. Move on. This church was near hot the cold sister pain, but they were lukewarm, and their lives mirrored the water they drank. Now remember, I shared with you that later this year did not have a viable water supply. All right, all right. Hot water was piped in from the north, and cold water came from the south. And by the time it reached the city, it was an undesirable temperature. Neither hot nor cold. There's nothing like a hot cup of tea when we got the flu yeah. on a cold winter day. There's nothing like a cold glass of water on a hot, steamy summer afternoon after you worked all day in your yard. But sometimes disruptions happen. 
The phone may ring, or your wife may call you, and you put that cup of tea down, and you put that water down, and you go back to get it, you begin to put it to your mouth, and it's undesirable because it doesn't have a refreshing that it wouldn't have because it was hot, or it was cold. Lord, have mercy. And that's how God is viewing the church at Laodicea, that they were neither hot nor cold, but they were lukewarm, no conviction. And serving God half-heartedly. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we're living in a time unless you give somebody a position, unless you give them a grand standing in the church, they won't serve. I know I'm right about it. And God is not pleased with that. And the text says, I'm about ready to spoon you out of my mouth. Lord have mercy. They mirrored the water that they drank. But listen, they were not completely cold. After all, they did attend church. I think we all have experienced this. Church hurt is one of the hardest things to do. Am I right, Rob? When you come into the church building and you want to be receiving a warm embrace, there's always somebody that's sacred to you. <laughs> that is as cold as dry. <laughs> yes, and they stick to you like you. Yes, yes, yes. Am I right about yes. yes, yes, yes. So they come to church cold as ice. My Lord. My Lord. With no passion. No, passion. no desire to live for the Lord. Yeah. And they weren't all hot either, Sister Fanny's. Because they were lacking conviction. Mm -hmm. Believing that part of it. Unless I get my place, I'm going to be new born. They're not willing to sacrifice, but satisfy being mediocre and has no desire to change. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Jesus. And Jesus begins to warn them in the text I'm about to spoon you. Out of my mouth. In the text, Jesus is saying, really, I don't care for lukewarmness. Perhaps many churches today love lukewarmness because it doesn't hold them accountable. They come together regular, regularly on a, on a regular basis and they really don't have a desire to worship God, Lewis. They're no longer moved by the sacrifices that Jesus made for the redemption of their soul. They're moved by what makes them feel good for the moment. Are you praying with me? Or they're moved by the salary they may receive. Not really caring about ministering the way that God has gifted them to minister. They got an agenda and it's not a God's agenda. One of the greatest needs that the world needs today is redemption from wickedness. The Bible says to the church in Matthew 28, Go ye therefore and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have taught you. And Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of time. See, the real work is not in the building. The real work is out there on your job and the pocket that you in your neighborhood. Whatever you find your hands to do, you need to do it for God's glory. And everything that you do, there should be a purpose for the Christian that is to seek and to save that which is lost, to deliver. Yeah, the food, man, when you give them the food, there should be a purpose. Yes, and the food is just a need, man, that draws people to the Christian's attention that they're trying to be obedient to God because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. But your ultimate goal is to let somebody know that Jesus loves them. When you sing, my brother, your ultimate goal is to sing that you will make preaching easy, that somebody's heart may be softened, but you've got to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit on you because only through the Holy Spirit will people be drawn yeah. to the cross. Yeah. If you play the piano, when you play, you've got to play it with the anointing because God has everything set in order. Yeah. And the purpose should be one purpose, not one church, but one purpose under God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
whose warmness will never grow and prosper the kingdom of God. Because we don't add people, we do, just for that, to the role here. But we need to add them to the kingdom of God. Where the king sits. Where he can deal with them. And my brothers and sisters, I fear that Jesus, in the time that we're living in, is sick to his stomach with the modern church. Jesus. You don't have to say anything. Jesus. And in this year, 2020, I believe that he's trying to reset the church. Yes, Jesus. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. I'm still in the text. Verse number 7, he says, You said, I am rich. I have implied wealth and do not need a thing. Remember now, this was a wealthy city. They refused Rome's help and rebuilt the city. They were arrogant people. They had all they needed. They were not interested in helping someone else. Jesus saw them as lacking in conviction, believing half-heartedly. They were look more. The question that I pose to you today. Have you been saved? Baptized with the Holy Ghost? Are you using your gift for the glory of God? And I believe now that God in this year 2020, from March and up until this appointment, until this time, has allowed all that we experience that we can open our eyes. May I remind you that God hates pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got a fine church, good pews, mm -hmm. TVs on the wall, mm -hmm. bills are paid. Jesus. But God is not concerned about that. Yeah. If we ever accomplish anything, it will be the result of what God is doing in us and through us. As we are obedient to him. Can I hear a witness? I don't know about you, but I can't make it without him. Our spiritual position and the work that we do cannot justify the building that we sit in or the clothes that we wear or the money in our building for. No, 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 no. Our servanthood to the Lord isn't about us or our finances. It's all about him. Are you praying with me? Pray that we will never get to the place that we feel that we have arrived and see no need to change. Individually and collectively. We have arrived. And depending on how we work out our salvation, we are going to arrive one day, somewhere. And I can't determine where it's going to be for you. But I know that I want to work while it's day. Because yes, night is soon coming. Yes, Lord. That no man can work. Yes. I know that I can't work my way into heaven. Amen. But I know that God has given me a work. Amen. And I must keep, and you must keep your hand to the gospel flag. And don't look back. Amen. Because the Bible says if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Right. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God is inspecting the church. And he's looking at our pre-existing condition. Yeah. The text says in verse 17, but you do not realize that you are wretched, you are pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Oh, God. Jesus. Their perception mm -hmm. in the church of Laodicea mm -hmm. and their reality was totally different. Totally different. Jesus saw something that they didn't see. Amen. They thought they was all right. Because mm. they put up in the front of the church on Sunday morning with their lady. Uh -huh. <laughs> they have the finest clothes that money can buy. Yes. They got a little money in the stock market. Come on. Come on. Little money in the bank. Come on. They got a good job in a vacation home down in the floor. Mm. They thought all oh, that was well, but Jesus said that you are rich. You are miserable and you're in need of my faith. 
Because the Bible reminds us what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will you exchange for your soul? Oh yes, Jeff, yes. They were wealthy. But actually, they were poor. Spiritually bankrupt. They thought they looked fine. But they were blind. No spiritual vision. They had the highest fashion. But they were naked. Uncovered before God. Listen to me. Uncovered in righteousness. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we must keep ourselves before the Lord in fellowship with Him. So that we don't become spiritually ignorant. Lord, first, He inspects the church. And number two, now He counsels the church of legacy. He says in verse number 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich. My brothers and sisters, we got to make the right investment. Jesus is saying to us today, invest in me. How do I invest in me? I'm glad you asked. Study the word. That you may show yourself approved. A workman, not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. What else, preacher? Well, pray in faith. Yeah. Because when you study the word, God is speaking. Yeah. And if God is speaking to you, you need to speak back what he said to you in prayer to let him know that I acknowledge you, God. But God is soon and very soon is going to stop speaking, God. Somebody don't believe that. Jesus. He still gets speaking. Yeah. Yeah. We still have the opportunity to open up our Bibles. Yeah. We still have the opportunity to bend down on our knees. Mm -hmm. And not just pray when we need something, but we're praying in obedience and, and reverence to God because He's been so good to you. Does anybody in the house know that God has been good to you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to continue to invest in don't worry about a vaccine. Don't worry about a Republican or a Democrat. All you need to do is invest in God. Get down on your knees and pray like you never prayed before. Because God is inspecting the church. He's inspecting the church. He's inspecting the church. And he wants us to reinvest in it. Matter of fact, physically. They were rich. Physically, we may look like we're rich. I often tell folks that don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Because we're not nobody to keep up with. But we are blessed by the best. But we don't take them stock on the things that we accumulate. Because as soon as we get, it can go. Physically, we may look like we're rich. But we're probably the poorest in the church. Poor in spirit. Hallelujah. We need to invest in the Lord. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Matthew 6 20, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither more nor rust and corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Can I get a witness? We are living in a culture today that is spiritually bankrupt. You don't have to say it, man. Let me say it again. We are living in a culture today that is spiritually bankrupt. Once upon a time, the men and women of God used to pray over the people of God. They used to pray like they never prayed before. The women used to go into the morning closet. And they used to pray to the knees was raw. And they used to bring them to the church and tell them, Lord, I know you ain't a mess, but you need Jesus. So pray.
Jesus said in John 8, 31, maybe 32. 31 and 32, John. He said this to the Jews that believe on you. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Free from what, Pastor? Look at all of the rigor that's going on in the name of Jesus. Peter Popoff got some water to give him. Yeah, yeah. Peter Popoff got some water to give him. All on the TV. Got folks lining up, advertising about this water will bless you. And I, I just received $10,000. And I just got this done. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. You don't need nobody to play some water and say it's in it to you. What you need is to seek the Lord while he may be found. You need to draw near to him while he is here. I know there is a way to see faith in me. The way that it was there. And that stuff just didn't start. Her and I did the same thing. And I'm not talking about their ministry, but all I want to say to you is that you need to continue in God's word. That you may know the truth. That the truth will make you free. The all of us great things that in the world is that in the name of Jesus. That is not the church. The church is the called out The sanctified ones. The blood washing The ones that are willing to lay down their life for Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, help me today. Help me today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We must continue to instill ourselves with the truth, sound doctrine in our lives. Hear me closely. And sound doctrine and the truth must be instilled in our children as well. That's right. Our children yeah. are suffering. Yeah. All across the land today, yeah. almost in every church, not all of them, you don't see many children. Yeah. Whose fault is that? Yeah. Have we made one? <laughs> By not making a place for them? Are we really sharing the gospel with them? Are we willing to make the sacrifice to be a Sunday school teacher? Are we willing to make a sacrifice to be a mentor? And I know some folks are saying here and out there, I'm going at it home. But God called you to come out of your home. That's right. That's right. It's wide in here. But it's the truth. You can't even find people that want to teach the word anymore. Make all kinds of excuses. And the church will never prosper and grow until men and women begin to see their responsibility not just to feed themselves, but to go back to Matthew 28 to make disciples. Oh, no, don't want to hear that. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. It's the truth. They were wealthy, but they were spiritually bankrupt. Jesus inspected the church, and he sees their problem. And now he offers some counsel to give godly advice to a biblical solution. Lord have mercy. And that is to invest in him. We got to be careful yeah. on what we are giving out. Because the future generation of our families and our churches depend on what we invest in, invest in today. Let me say that again. The future of our generations to come depends on what we invest in today. And what we don't invest in today 
We will tolerate tomorrow. Lord, help me today. Help me today. Jesus encouraged them and us as well to put on a white man. Clothe ourselves in righteousness. His salvation is the only way that we can stand acceptable before God when we transition on. And we'll hear one of two things. Depart from me or in him. Because he does inspect his church to see if you're acceptable to make it into the kingdom. And he will judge us for the deeds that we do in our physical body and in the body of Christ. That's his will. Oh, help me today, God. All of us will feast one day at the marriage supper, Jeff, but we must be clothed with white men. Blood bought, cleansed with the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that will guarantee us an acceptance in the kingdom of God in eternity. There is no hope of forgiveness for sin. We need to ask God to open our eyes like he was trying to get the church of Laodicea to see. Yeah, you had what? You had a big edifice that was shaken and borne down by an earthquake and you were able to build it on your own. Yes, you had the greatest clothes. As a matter of fact, you manufactured the finest wool. And you even had a medical school that dealt with eye disease. And God is saying to them and to us as well, you may have all that, but you need to anoint your eyes with some type of set that's not manufactured by man. Oh my God, that they may see and that we may see ourselves, who we truly are. That we may see how the world is that we're living in and the world is destroying itself. And the world doesn't destroy itself unless the people of the world destroys it. And the church has to let their light shine. That men and women can see your good works and glorify God, which is heaven. So let your light shine brighter than the darkness is in this world. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. God will take care of you. I'm a witness. We need a vision for holy living. Yes, yes. We need a vision for holy living. Yes. We need to humble ourselves and serve lost souls. Oh yes, there is far more than just having a relationship with Jesus than just going to church. There is a life to live and a work to do outside of the church. Oh yes. We have gotten good in doing the work in the church. But God wants us to do the work of the church. There's a difference. He inspects the church and he counsels the church to buy gold, try by fire. And then he gives them to consolation. He gives them to consolation. Even though he done told us about our suffering day, Jack, our pitiful condition. Jesus still loves us. He loves us. He says in verse 19, those who are loved, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Jesus' love is a perfect love. I can get no amens on that. Jesus' love is a perfect love. He loves us too much to allow us to die in us. That's why he died on the cross for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world that we might be saved. He loves the church too much to allow it to stray from him. And he's continuously now inspecting the church by showing us that we're nothing without him. He confronts us. He rebukes us. He convicts us and he corrects us. Yes. 
and nobody likes that because 2 Timothy 3, 16 said all scriptures are giving by the inspiration of God. They're good for just that correction rebuking that the man of God might be very equipped. And we need to be very equipped because I don't know about you. We are in a war, y'all. You know? That's right. We are in a war. And this war does not rest on against flesh and blood, but it rests on against wickedness and principalities in high places. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to tear down God's kingdom. But I stand today for God I live and for God I die. Hallelujah. How about you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How about you? Do you believe that? Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus is saying to us. In verse 20, Jesus. here I am. I'm standing at the door. And I'm. if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus is standing. And he's still knocking. Mm -hmm. He continues to stand and knock on the hearts of men and women today. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. wants to dwell within the hearts of all mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. He wants us all to enjoy mm -hmm. the intimate relationship mm -hmm. with him. Just like the one that you had with your sweetheart in school. So intimate that you couldn't go to sleep unless you fell asleep with her or him on the phone. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That she wanted to be with her everywhere she was. But my brothers and sisters, in every relationship there will be conflict. And I do believe that the relationship that we have with God right now has been severed because we've got too much stuff and not enough of him. Are you playing with me? God, God wants an intimate relationship with us. This can only happen unless you let him in. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he provides for us whatever we need according to his love. He says in verse 20, To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in the throne, even as I also overcame, and I am sitting down with my Father in the throne. For those who open the door and receive Christ, there is an eternal reward. Can I get a witness of? There will be that says to heaven to all those who are willing to let God come in and expect them. Oh yes, they all have, and we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have a pre-existing condition. From Adam all the way up to now, we all stand and need to have some eyes have to anoint the eyes that we can see where we stand. And we can see the world that we live in is getting wicked. Oh, we all need to be forgiven of our sins, and we all need to know that we can miss hell. But that is not enough. Just knowing Jesus is not enough. You gotta know with a shadow of a doubt that Jesus has a prepared place for the redeemed. And he who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. My brothers and sisters, many within the church of Laodicea was lacking in their relationship with Christ. He was calling and he's still calling today. Desiring that his people, those who have an ear, let them hear what he is saying to the church. I don't know about you, but if you are lost and without the Lord, you can be saved today. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm going to be saved because Jesus came down out of the way, stepped into time, put on the robe of flesh, walked this earth like you and I. He was human, but yet he was a woman. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He made the lame to talk, yes, yes. and the dumb to walk, the lame to walk, and the dumb to talk. Yes. He was there in the beginning with God, and he's there right now. They betrayed my Jesus yes. with a kiss. One of his faithful disciples was right there at the table with him, betraying him with a kiss. They took my Jesus up. They beat him all day long. They put him in the tomb. He Yes, this is what Jesus did. He came to be inspected. And Jesus passed the 
for a hundred years. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. And he's coming back again. Yes, that's right. All right. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. You get him to inspect his feet. That we may open our eyes. That he can anoint us with an anointment that only he can do. That you can see him for yourself. Do you see him on the cross? Do you see him crying out? Saying, Father. Father. Why have thou forsaken me? Do you see him? Lay him on the cross. Blood running out of his hands and his feet. Do you see him on the cross? And the wickedness of the religious leaders and the politicians of that day mocking him. Oh, but around the night now. When it got dark all over the world, they began to realize this must be the Son of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He has a right to respect us. And my brothers and sisters, we need to get right. Because in these last days that we're living in, God needs the real Christian. Yeah. Are you praying? I don't know about you, as we open up the doors of this church, physical doors are always open. But we want to open up the spiritual Maybe there's someone out there today. And God has stepped into your place of where you He begins to inspect your pre-existing condition. And he has diagnosed you of being lost and outside of the ark of sin. And he has the vaccine to cure you, to save you, to deliver you, to heal you, and to set you free. He's standing at the door of your heart right now. And he's not. Won't you let him in? Won't you let him in? The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. As always, I gotta explain that to you because it's a mystery. But you gotta believe it by faith. You gotta believe that Jesus was born of the earth. You gotta believe that he walked this earth like you and I. He was human, but yet he was alive. You gotta believe that Jesus died on the cross. For your sins and my sins and the sins of the whole world. You gotta believe that Jesus was buried yeah. in a bar tomb, sealed with the room seal. Yeah. God put there. Yeah. Because there was talk that yeah. the Jews might come and steal him. But early on Sunday morning, we got to leave. Yeah. And with the God still standing there, and the ladies coming to the tomb to anoint him, Jesus was not there. He got up with all power in his hands. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I'm a witness of what Jesus done. I may not fully understand everything, but I know he's free. He's real. 
Because I accepted him in my life. My life has never been the same. Amen. When you can take a wretched pill, yeah. man like me, and I'm boasting, pick me up, turn me around, and place my feet yes. on solid ground. When he took the needle out of my arm, the alcohol out of my mouth, took the whole money out of my spirit, took my lying and stealing away. Nobody can tell me that there is a God. That's what he did for me. Now I'm not ashamed to tell you what the gospel is and from where I came from because it's power to salvation. That's just a little bit of my story. Maybe you're out there today and you have some struggles in your life. And you're tired of living the way you're living. The first thing you need to do is accept Jesus. Yes, Lord. Because once you accept Him, then you have the ability to turn from your sins. But the first step is to accept Jesus into your heart. And he will empower you to work out your own soul salvation because it's a process. You've got to turn to God first by accepting Jesus and then turn from your sin. Somebody will hear me today. I extend to you an invitation. Time is winding down. Time is winding down. And today, your number may come up. And if you don't know Jesus, as the free part of your sin, your eternity will be spent in hell. And my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. I want to go with Jesus. If you're here today, and you're not saved, not saying you're watching on Facebook. Why don't you give your life to Christ? Why don't you let it come? Pray this prayer if you're the one. God, it's me. It's me that is wretched. It's me that is pure. It's me that is poor. Yes. But you have drawn me by your spirit once again. And I accept the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son Jesus. Come into my heart that I might experience life with Jesus. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. And there may be some that are saved. And God has inspected your pre-existing condition. And he has found you where you are at. And he's not pleased. Only he has the right to judge. And only he has the right to inspect you. Because the text says, who he loves, he corrects. And if you're here today, if you're out there and you're saved, and God has found you in a place that he's not pleased with. First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and then to cleanse you from all the righteousness. That particular text was not written to the unseen. That was written to the church. Because God knows that we all have sinned. And we all will sin. And we all will fall short. But as Christians, we don't practice sin. We don't practice sin. We recognize it. And you give it back to God. So be here today. If you're out there.
Just confess. First John 1 and 9. Walking in your body. That's how much he loves you. He loves you that much that he will not turn his back on you. He loves the church that much that he will not withhold it from you. And he does what it's going to Let us continue to pray for the sick and shut in, for the names that are in the box. And I ask now that uh, Mr. Smith will come and pray for them. And let us pray for those who are very sick. If someone's in your life now, you know they stand in your prayer. Has Mr. Smith prayed, call out their name. God will hear you, Mr. Smith. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. May God bless you.